Okay, here we go. What's up? Oh, taking me out. She is ready. Ready, Freddy. What's up? See this time. I got the popcorn. You know what? This popcorn is really good. Hey. What's up? Tom, somebody, Clark's. It's good. It's um, butter tossy. That sounds good. I love some popcorn. Whenever I'm talking to you, girl, I need me some. Girl, guess what? I'm detoxing. Look, that two-day detox. Girl, right after tomorrow, I'm going to hand me some popcorn. I uh, have popcorn every night. <laughs> uh, I'm about to do the Steve Harvey um, seven-day detox. No, 10 days. It's, not, it's a raw vegan. I was going to do the 20-day, but I was like, you know what? I'm not going to do that to myself. No, you need everything. Everything. 20 days is a long time. So That I'm is a long time. Hey, Crystal. Hey, Enchanted PR. Crystal. <laughs> so you got to get that um, volume together on your um, going lives because Anthony Hamilton was looking all perturbed. I was looking perturbed. I was like, uh. Oh. Did you see if she had an interview with Anthony? It did end up okay, but you and that Wi-Fi situation, girl, you worse as me over here with this Wi-Fi. Okay. Who are you talking to? Crystal. No, that's not... No, Crystal didn't do no interview with no... Um, with Anthony Hamilton. Not yeah. this Not this Crystal. Not C. Let me. Oh, okay. Enchanted PR. Her name is Crystal, too. Oh my gosh, two crystals in a... <laughs> I was like, don't be talking to Crystal like that. She didn't do it. <laughs> oh, yes. No, Crystal, my Crystal, I know. Your Crystal got bad Wi-Fi too. She, just she does it. not. I'm just saying. <laughs> be taking up for Molly. East <laughs> Molly should be taking up the Easter just like this. Just like that. They ain't no real friends. They are not real friends. Oh. Mm. So, intro, baby. I'm John LPR. And that is Tiki Miko. I'm Tiki Miko. <laughs> and it's T I K I underscore Miko. I see this popcorn. It's not going to go over well. No, it's not. Put it up. Yeah. Put it up, friend. Yes. Okay, so episode nine, season four, HBO Insecure. Will Issa and Molly ever truly be friends again? Will Lawrence ever commit to Charles? Um, in the marriage. <laughs> I didn't even mean to say that. <laughs> but that is kind of the question of the day. And will Nate ever get with Issa again on that level that we want to see them on? And is Andrew going to ever kick Molly to the curb with that nasty attitude? Those are the questions we will answer. We want to know what character are you in your friendships with your people, and has this helped you reevaluate just how you go about dealing with people? Because it has made me have some food for thought. Okay, it, it makes you look at yourself when you watch this show. You look at yourself and your friendships with people. Like seriously, are you a Molly or are you a Issa? Now, you can be a little bit of both. I do believe that you can change and humble yourself from the Mollies and become an Issa. Or, you know, you could be stuck in your ways. And we know a lot of people who are stuck just like that and think nothing is wrong with it. Or you can be bipolar and be happy being two people. Dee, 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 dee. I'll take bipolar for 200, Chuck. And you live it well, honey. You live it well. Girl, I live it well. <laughs> <laughs> Look at him. So, girl, when it first started, when it first came on? The actress in my next life. Your next life? Okay. Uh, the actress. Maybe after I hit 60. 
I'm gonna have my aunts um train you, give you some pointers. Yeah, I'm gonna be that old lady, that crazy old lady. You oh my gosh, you ain't gotta act. <laughs> Crazier. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, speaking of daring, how dare Lawrence and Issa try to be this happy dream couple that we all love on the computer together. This is how the episode opened up. They were studying together. Then they were back in the bedroom. They were out to eat. And they ain't I never go in no bedroom. They stay on that couch, okay? Oh, they okay. wore that couch out. So we know they was not bored in the house, bored in the house, bored. They, was they were quarantining and chilling. So what did you think when you saw the episode at first? I thought she was dreaming. Like, I thought it was a dream. Like, she walked home in the last episode. That's how it ended. So I thought this was like a flash, like in her head, like, yeah, me and Lawrence is going to be doing this, we're going to be doing that, we're going to be breaking it down. And then this was real. They were really getting it. They was really getting it. Like, we missed a lot, girl. <laughs> last seven days, they just sent. Yes. And that's what they need to fill me in. This is why they need an hour, because they need to fill me in from last Sunday to this Sunday. You can't just jump from Sunday to Sunday and think I'm going to pick up like that. I can't do it. You were trying to figure out what was in her mind on the walk home. Now you <laughs> to... <laughs> or you really wanted that to be a whole episode of what was in her mind. And I wanted Condola, condolences. Yeah. Cause... I was thinking about her being outside. I was waiting for all that to happen, but it just jumped to them being madly in lust. Producer, because you was going to have Condola jump out from one of the places. <laughs> yes. Now he's on her way home, and she did Lawrence go visit her in the hospital because Condola didn't beat her down to the ground. And Molly got a bail, Issa, out of jail. Out of jail after she recovered from the hospital. After she got out of the hospital because it was all, it was a mess. Right, yeah. That's another episode. I think we're going to rewrite that one. The remix. Yes, I was really, I, you know, they, they are so comfortable with each other. That it was so easy to go right back into this relationship. Like, it never ended. This is why I wanted her to take her time. Because I don't want her emotions to be in it so much that she get hurt. Because I got a feeling that's what's about to happen. Like... Well, she is all in. What are you talking about? It never... It, it, she's in it like it never ended. She's not taking her time. Because she is... That is her man. Okay. Okay. She so, loved him. Issa decides to break down to Nate, I mean, to um, Lawrence, the fact that she's going to go over and help her friend move, her friend, and this is the guy that I used to date. And Lawrence takes it all in like, oh, was it all that? You got to just be telling me everything. Like, oh, like you being in subjection to him now. That's like, we in a committed relationship. Like, you need to tell me where you're going. We ain't in no relationship, boo. Right. And so let's like, define what we've been doing. Let's define said, right now what we've been doing. She said, I don't want to break up whatever we have going on. Well, what is this that we have? Like, she said it and asked the question. And Lawrence, uh, he did the electric slide. He did the Tootsie Roll. He did. And all around that question, and we didn't get an answer. That's right. A That's a red flag right there. Right. I think, I'm sorry. Did you see me? Yeah. Okay. I think they went everything, they went about it the whole wrong way. Like, so I'm just scared she's going to get hurt. I was always, I love them together, but I was wanting her to pace herself so that when they get to a certain level because, you know, Lawrence is quick to um, throw up San Diego. Where he's going? Sacramento. Oh, he keep bringing it up. He keep bringing it up because that's where he want to be. He wants her to know, like, it's happening. And really, when he get ready to dip, which he will, he's going to dip. He's going to leave you, Issa. He's going to go to San Francisco so you can either um get on that trolley car and Tootsie roll on down there with him or you can say goodbye and hello, Nate. Um, and let me tell you, 
The long distance thing between San Francisco and LA is an eight hour drive. Eight hours. Seven the if you're flying. So it's not no right around the corner or, you know, right up 30 minutes up the street. This is like moving out of town. Baby. Yeah. Issa went, she went so strong into this. She really, I'm just cautious. I'm cautious for her. I want her to move slower, but it's too late. Like outside looking in, I'm like, girl, no, don't do it. But then again, you have to remember they in their what, late 20s, mid 20s or something. Yeah, maybe. No kids. So I'm talking from grown up to Miko, you know, that been through things and know how it's going to end up. So I'm quick to protect myself. Okay, auntie. What from auntie mode. I don't want to be auntie. Girl, <laughs> you is auntie. The fact that you can check the whole Instagram name, Satiki Miko, you are, you are I am committed. I am. <laughs> you are committed. Oh, my goodness. But, it's, yeah. Like, Lawrence is ready to commit. Like, I'm not getting that from his body language. I'm just getting that he missed getting it in with Issa, making love to her. And he missed the happiness that she brought him. But did he miss it enough? Or is Lawrence trying to go to San Francisco to make enough money where he could be like, this is my wife, and and have her settle on down with him? You know, that is a possibility. But at the same time, <clears throat> I go back to when he was in the, we're going to go back to the previous episode and probably two episodes back. When Condoleezza, he was over Condoleezza's house, his house, and when she had her friends giving, and he was talking about he was ready to settle down or whatever, and she was like, huh, "I'm not there." So he knows Issa is at the same place. I, I'm sure he knows she's ready to settle down. She, he knows he loves her. So again, he just went back to what was comfortable. Because I do know he wants to settle down, but do he know who he wants to settle down with is the question. Yeah. Because it's her name, Crystal, not Condo Condoleezza. Wait Condoleezza. Oh, you call her like Condoleezza, right? Right. Condoleezza. Did I call her Condoleezza again? Yeah, her name is Condola. I know it's Condola. I, I've been calling her all types of things. Oh, okay, Condola. Because of Twitter. Twitter is eating... Condoleezza up. Yeah, Condola yeah. up. Her name is Condolences. Condolences. They call her that too. Number two. Issa is the woman that has cheated. Can a man fully commit to a woman again that he that has cheated on him in the past? Do you think that in the back of Lawrence's mind, now that she didn't let Nate out the bag and that she's spending time with this man and he didn't told her it's nobody else hanging around him, do you think that Lawrence is going to have a suspicious eye? Because he obviously ain't seen that yet. So if he's seen that, he would be worried. Because Nate is a whole snack up in this piece. Nate is fine. A snack. Um... I don't know. I I do know it's harder for a man to forgive a woman if they go out because that's the double standards of the world. If a woman cheat, you are the skank, you is this, you that, you nasty, I can't never forget. But if a man cheat, uh, oh, oh that, that just, it was that just, wasn't nothing. Oh, uh, it wasn't, I, I wasn't emotionally attached. Yeah, yeah, it was nothing. But when women, but you got to think too, when women do cheat, it's basically something really going on at home. Put the popcorn down. <laughs> you is a home. <laughs> it's something usually going on at home for a woman to cheat. Yeah. We cheat because y'all just not cutting the mustard. It's something is going on. Men would just... Everything could be, you could be ironing his clothes, cooking for him. I said we, uh, not a cheater. Huh? I said we. I got it. We are not. We are, I am not a cheater at all. And if you, 
no, I don't do that. Anyway, but um, a man, for a man, a woman could be doing everything at home. Cooking, taking care of your kids, making sure the house clean, massaging your back, running your bath water. And you have no men to still go out there and cheat. Like they are just like looking for something. After you clipping his toenails. You clip his toenails. A cute clean his dirty drawers. Oh, and he cheats. Yeah. But as soon as you go out there, he can't forgive you. So Lawrence is forgiven because... I don't know why Lawrence is being forgiven. I think that he realized he didn't have his stuff together. And maybe he, he seemed like the type of man that would be like, well, yeah, I was like the worst. So I understand why you cheated. I would cheat on me too. <laughs> well, that conversation they had last episode, it opened up so much stuff. Like I feel like he understood where Issa came from because Issa specifically said, I didn't even want to come home. Right. Like we wasn't having sex. It was nothing there. It was like dead to her. So she was just looking for somebody to love her because at that moment he was so depressed, not yeah. acknowledging it. And but then too, my thing is this is if you really love somebody and they're going through stuff like this depression because maybe somebody lost a job, maybe they started drinking or something. You gotta you know, they're young. But we got to kind of learn how to stick through it. Yeah. You got to stick through the troubling times. The answer is not, and we clearly see, going out to somebody else for a temporary fix when you're really, truly in love with somebody, you know, your spouse, your man, whoever you with. So, yeah, I that, but I do love them together. Don't get me wrong. I love seeing them together. Speaking of a temporary fix, so Issa decides after... No one was available for her to talk about Lawrence and then being friends with Nate after Kelly didn't answer the phone, after her brother in that raggedy advice, not even interested. Molly, she realizes, you know what? This is my friend. This is who I would talk to this about. Hmm. Are you only one to talk to Molly Issa because you want to discuss Lawrence and what you should do? In that very realistic flashback that she had, I thought that really happened. Like, she really called my... Yes! I thought that happened, too. I was like, she said that? But in true Molly fashion, that's what she would expect Molly to say. But yeah. she went out on the limb, called Molly, left her a message. Molly called her back and said, okay, let's set the date. Before they set the date and before we saw them to dinner... We go to the scene where Molly is sitting down with her therapist. There you go. I just, I just want to stab Molly in the eye. Like, I can't. Girl. I Molly gives me, like, she needs to take a look at herself. The, counsel, the therapist is not helping. Miss Rhonda, you got to call somebody better because she is not listening to you. She is not. I think that even though, like I said before, you can give a person advice, Miss Molly should probably type all of that up. I hope she was taking shorthand or something and email her everything they went over because a lot of times when you read something or you play it back, like maybe they should record their sessions and she can see and see it. get into her head like, you know what? I sound real crazy when I said this. Why am I this way? I agree. I agree with you. I agree. That's why when I express myself, a lot of times I do write it because right. you're able to really dive into it. Yeah, because if you don't, it goes in one ear and right out the other. And then maybe Molly is going to replay it back in her head and hear what she wanted to hear. Like she heard the therapist say, you're right, Molly. It is everybody. And the therapist is like, I, that is not what I said. Mm -hmm. you know, sometimes you only hear what you want to hear. What you want to hear, right. And that's but, what really heard. Um, yeah, it was something that the therapist said to her, though. Um, oh, she said, do, do you, you want to be in a, do you want to be in a relationship or do you want to be right? Right. Did she even answer that? It, she made no, she couldn't answer it. She was like, Dang, Miss Rhonda, you just giving it to me. 
because she needed somebody to tell her, I mean, even though this lady telling her everything she needs to do, she's not using it. Like you could give somebody the tools to life, but if they're not picking it up and using it, then because what do you have? When they went to lunch, she would have went into that lunch with a whole different attitude. Like, Issa was right. nervous, but Molly came in like, wait a minute, was she late? Was Issa there first? Issa was there first sitting at the, she was nervous like she had a job in the view. And Molly comes strutting in like she just won Miss America contest uh, 2000. She was looking fly though. Give it to her. Uh, she was fly. She was fly. Okay, so Issa jumped up like, oh, I'm sorry. Like, no, you do not need to jump up. This is a situation where you could have been like, Molly. No, I'm just playing. I'm just playing. But she was happy to see, like, Issa was truly happy to see her. And um, Molly was just giving her, like, she was just so standoffish the whole time. Like, oh, okay, I'm going to give you this little fake little hug, you know. <laughs> I was like, if you hug me, you better embrace me. Like, I don't want a real hug or don't hug me at all. If you be it was awkward. It was an awkward situation for some two girls who really have known each other for so long, who's supposed to love each other and are best friends. Because granted, let me tell you, you're going to have issues with every relationship. And it makes you think that about how women treat their friends versus their girlfriends versus their male friends. Again, I always say a man could go out, give you an STD, have a baby on you, beat you down. And you're going to be like, oh, that's my baby. I forgive you. But let your girlfriend say something that you don't agree with. F her. I'm not her friend no more. She can, you know, just run her down to the ground. So, <laughs> so I felt like that was her opportunity. That was the opportunity for her to come in, Molly to come in, like humble herself a little bit to see where it's going. But she had a chip on her shoulder and she just came for therapy. Like what in the world? Right, she was on. Wasted her money. Got no therapy. How she been over <laughs> Are you really acting like this on your way from therapy? And then even I want to stab her. Trying to ask about the family. How's your mom? How's your breath? Like how's this? Oh, uh, she gave a little, you know, answers, but my she thing, wasn't really. If you got something to say, just say it. Just say it. Like say what you gotta say. Don't sit there and fake it, phony. Okay, Issa uh, offering to pay the bill. Your thoughts? That was cool. That was fine because before, Molly always paid. So Issa was trying to show her, like, look, I got it. We ain't had nothing but some daggone mimosas anyway. I'll pay for these mimosas. Right. And I got the tip. Hey, right. I think it was cool. That wasn't no big deal. But I didn't like how Molly was like, what? you? Oh, you paying? Like, you... Like you just broke and just yes, <laughs> like she been taking care of you all her life, all my life. I've been taking care of this girl, and like, now she got twenty five dollars. Yes, somebody. Mm. And look, Issa pulled her money out. She was like, "Yeah, I got ten dollars, twenty dollars." <laughs> yes, girl. That oh, that was the money that she just got from the new venue for the next part. Oh. Yes. You wrong. You just got that money, girl. Well, that's all right because the thing is, she got it. So I'm, yeah, I, and I'm. You know what? I was happy to hear that she was working. On another festival, yeah. and guess what? She's doing it on her own. She got that little assistant girl. You know that little girl. She grinding. Now let me ask you a question. Do you think that um, I do like the fact that everybody is coming to their own? Do you think that it was not until you got in your 30s that you started coming into your own? Because I had to think about it like, okay, when did I don't think I really felt like I had arrived the right. Once I did have it all figured out, because I kept moving from city to city, I moved from LA to Baltimore, to Maryland, to Virginia, to uh, Philadelphia, back to L.A. Then you did a lot of moving. I was trying to figure it all out. Yeah. Once I had my son, my first son, I was 29, and then I had to figure that out, like, all over again. How am I going to take care of this kid? Okay? That's when you I feel like 
That's when you I, walk through my life. So yes, funny. and see, I got experience from you. I honestly, I watched you, so really? I feel like I came into my own when I got my house. So I probably was like twenty nine. I don't know. Uh, is twenty nine like the turning point? Because well, I feel like I was. Oh, you said when I came into my own, like uh, I got my house. Let me see, Nazir. We lived together like a couple of times. We lived together twice, right? Uh, so he was starting kindergarten. So yeah, I had to be like 29, 28, 29. That's when it clicked for me. And that's the difference between these girls and the decisions that they're making. Amen. They don't have, but not saying that all people who don't have kids don't make logical decisions. Right. But I just think that some, shoot, I know some moms that's carefree, so I can't say. It definitely makes you look at life differently. Yeah. Move differently. You, you totally. Differently. Totally. Totally. Yes. So yeah, I um, I don't know. I'm just so, I'm so disappointed with Molly. I still just want to step. It's even though she seems to have secured the bag, like she's she's unhappy. Has found herself, so she's trying to come into her own. Her jealousy might lie in the fact that Issa is coming into her own. You know, like she got the festival together. That was an amazing festival that one person pulled off. Okay, Let me tell you, that was and she thing. did not need her. That was another... Makes you look at life differently. Yeah. Move differently. You, you totally. Differently. Totally. Right. Yes. So yeah, I um, I don't know. I'm just so, I'm so disappointed with Molly. I still just want to. And um, Molly was just giving her like she was just so standoffish the whole time. Like, oh, okay, I'm gonna give you this little fake. Look. Once I did have it all figured out. Because I kept moving from city to city. I moved from L.A. to Baltimore to Maryland to Virginia to uh, Philadelphia, back to L.A. Then you did a lot of moving. I was trying to figure it all out. Yeah. Once I had my son, my first son, I was 29. And then I had to figure that out, like, all over again. How am I going to take care of this kid? Okay? That's when you I feel like. That's when you I walk through my life. And yes, and see, I got experience from you. I honestly, I watched you, so really? I feel like I came into my own when I got my house. So I probably was like twenty nine. I don't know. Uh, is twenty nine like the turning point? Because well, I feel like I was. Oh, you said when I came into my own, like I got my house. Let me see, Nazir. We lived together like a couple of times. We lived together twice, right? Uh, so he was starting kindergarten. So yeah, I had to be like 29, 28, 29. That's when it clicked for me. And that's the difference between these girls and the decisions that they're making. Amen. They don't have, but not saying that all people who don't have kids don't make logical decisions. Right. But I just think that some, shoot, I know some moms that's carefree, so I can't say. It definitely makes you look at life differently. Yeah. Move differently. You, you totally. 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 Right. Yes. So yeah, I um, I don't know. I'm just so, I'm so disappointed with Molly. I still just want to step. It's even though she seems to have secured the bag, like she she's unhappy. Has found herself, so she's trying to come into her own. Her jealousy might lie in the fact that Issa is coming into her own. You know, like she got the festival together. That was an amazing festival that one person pulled off. Okay, let me tell you. That was and she thing. did not need her. That was another. That was another slap in the face to Molly because, in her mind, Issa need her for everything. But right. now that Issa is moving on her own, she's like, "What? And I'm the one." Her. People were complimenting her like, oh, this was dope. Oh, this is Yes, nice. yes, so yes. I can't say she funded it. 
She can say like I I she can She didn't it. do anything. Yes, in her home. A guest. Yes. I love She it. had a seat at the table. Yeah, okay? Table. Definitely. Yeah, and I like the fact that um the conversation they had at the little place, wherever they were, the little diner, it was real you could tell they were on eggshells a little bit, like Issa was uncomfortable. But when she left, I like how she was like, I'm, you know, helping Nate move if you want to come. You know, she was trying to keep the friendship going. Yes. But yes. Molly still had it in her mind, like, this B didn't say nothing about what she did. We got issues. We got issues. If we had issues so much, why didn't you say anything? Right. Why didn't you say anything, Molly? Why? And when she told her, you know me and Lawrence, or back seeing each other again, why didn't she say anything? Because she's jealous. Like, they like, oh, I've seen you. Well, she's not genuine. She's not a genuine person. She's not a genuine, happy person. Like, And that makes me not want to share nothing with you. I'm like, after that, she shouldn't share nothing else with her. I wouldn't be sure. I'm sure she know now. Hatership with her, okay? So what do you think about, okay, she left the diner, she went home. Well, to um, Drew's apartment, and he asked her how everything went. And she had that bad attitude about, uh, I don't even remember what she said about Issa because I just remember um, Andrew telling her that his brother had got him tickets for the basketball game as a way of, you know, like an um, olive branch. Yeah, for them to get back together, you know. Us to come. But remember, Okay, remember when you was at that hotel and you woke up that morning and that bed was empty beside you and you know you had showed your tail the night before acting a complete fool. Now, you remember you was like, oh, so did he leave or was it because of me? And then Andrew was like, oh, no, no, no. They just decided, you know, they're going to um, go shopping in the city. And she said, are we not going to see them the rest of the trip? Remember? And then right. like, oh, yeah, yeah. Everything's cool. I, he, I talked it over. He's my brother. It's cool. They did not. We did not see them together the rest of the trip. They was bad. No. See them again. So now you want to be big and bad. Like, oh, I don't want to go to the game. What? Girl, bye. He shouldn't even be wanting to buy you a ticket to the game. And because that's your man, you're not respecting his family. So what does that say to Andrew right then and there about this relationship? People oh, he's he's he, he's taking a tally of everything. Like, he's seeing how she's treating her friend for no real reason. Like, he's trying to get her to talk to um Issa, you know, address the issue. And he's trying to bring her to part of his family. Like, how are you going to date somebody and just be like, you do whatever you want to do with your family. I'm not going to be around them. That's not the case. I see Chanette's comment. Like, she don't understand uh, Molly's issue. She seems to come from a normal family. I agree. But yeah. ever since her father cheated on her mother, yeah. she was not able to recoup from that. Like, she act like it happened to her. Her mother forgave her father and moved on. So she's holding on to this you know, and I think this has happened with a lot of people. Things that happen in a family, they hold that grudge and right. they carry it in their relationship. Don't tell your kids about your business. That's your kids should not be involved. Like, they shouldn't. But something like that, I'm sure probably maybe the father moved out for a while and then maybe the parents reconciled. I don't know how it went because they don't give that full detail, but the parents are happy now. Right, right. <laughs> she said she was crazy from the beginning of the show. Yeah. It affected her. She's just crazy. She got money. She got an attitude. She thinks she's on her high horse. Her body is tight. She got great clothes. She is on top of the world, but guess what? She got But she's not people. happy. Limited friends. Limited friends. And her best. And the friends that she have, she needs to be real careful about those. Right. Maybe she should go be friends with Condola. She was so jealous of Condola. So jealous of Condola. Oh. Condola, Condoleezza. What I call her, Condoleezza. Yeah, that yeah. Is. Okay. So, Issa paying for brunch. What happened next? Oh, Issa and her pop up over um, Andrew and Molly's house. No, we got to go to the. No. No, when Issa went to help Nate. Oh, got all about that. 
Nisa went. Ooh, Nisa. Not me saying Nisa. I really need to put the popcorn down. <laughs> put it down. They moved and was like, bruh, what's up? What's up, my nigga? Like, but she was like, mm mm. She was so awkward. Just so awkward. But you was doing too much, Issa. Girl. Yeah. But and that 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 scene trust herself. If she would have trusted herself, she would have been able to just stand there and you know, rub a dub dub. But she was like, uh uh, let me run over here. Cause the next thing you know, it's be Issa 2.0. Girl, cause she knows. Cause Nate was looking fine. He was looking like uh, Nate was looking like a snap. Nate was looking back. He was like, ha ah. <laughs> Oh, dinner. <laughs> oh. Giggle. Nate makes her giggle. Nate's spirit and their energy, it's just like, mm, you know, she knows it too. And it's still there. You cannot be back with Lawrence if you still have feelings for Nate, and you do. You cannot deny that you're not feeling something between Nate. You just mad because he ghosted you. But that's the whole thing. Like that scene right there, did you see her expression? Like it was so sincere because she was like, oh, I have to tell you, I got back with my ex. And he was like, you mean the guy you cheated on? Like, are you kidding me? So, and he said his little thing about her, you know, about Lawrence. And she defended Lawrence like, well, at least he didn't just leave. Don't when he told her, when he told her the reason why he left was because he was, um, was bipolar. He found out he was bipolar. Her whole expression changed. And I was I like how he just let her know like he's basically in a different place. He know what type of people to have in his life. Um, and he says people like you. He, when he said that He defined it. He was like, I want you around. I know who I'm gonna have around and you one of them. Yes. Yes. Although you might be with your ex boyfriend. Yeah. Because get, guess what? Creepy, you gonna be calling me later, <laughs> right? Creepy was like, I only want you, but he was like, you're one of them. Not, you know, he didn't get creepy with the whole thing. No, he didn't. So he left it open so she could feel comfortable. And after that conversation, she relaxed. It was like straight up friends. I like their vibe together too. But I like this seriousness too. Like when they get serious, I. I enjoy it. I don't know. I'm just torn between the two. Um, I wish she'd just take her time with Lawrence. Yeah, no. Hmm? no. Mystery about Nate. He's like the mystery type of guy. I think a lot of his real personality comes out in his acting. And like with him, like being like a renaissance man, you know, like mm -hmm, mm -hmm. in L.A. protesting, you know. I don't know. It's just something about him that's just rugged. That raw, I like it. Some raw thing about him. But then too, I like. Um, I feel like he's really gentle with her, and he takes his time. Like, uh, yeah. <laughs> <that's> <laughs> oh, are you telling him to call you? <laughs> you gonna be in his DMs? Right. I'm gonna be like, what did you do? You? I definitely need to tag him on this review because he just needs to know that he brings a lot of, you know, his sex appeal, his rawness. What he brings to the show is like, yes. Like, I was really happy to see him back in the scenes and, you know, back with Issa. Not so much with Issa because really, but you know what? That's a whole nother video. But I like the energy he brings to the show. I think that was a great um, casting pick for his character. Yes. Did you see how she like stepped back when he was like, yeah, I'm about to buy the shop? And she was like, what? Like he got his thing going on. He's at a total different place. That's why she shouldn't have slept with Lawrence. She should have had her whole, like had it open so that she could do, I hate to say it, but she could figure things out. So she could figure things out. This is Not sleep with everybody, but figure things out. Let me tell you, the nine to five mind of a man and an entrepreneur woman, it never works out. Nine to five men don't understand entrepreneur women. 
because an entrepreneur is always working and what they have to do to work and make money cannot be done in a nine to five period. So when you only have work and once you leave work and you can leave it at the door, then you're off. So you're like, oh, okay, I'm off work. I'm ready to relax. You go home. They out the door because now they got to go out networking and be out all night and try to make money. But I, I disagree with that because are we a team? Yeah, but I've never seen uh, less the wife joins in or the woman that's nine to five or the man gets off their nine to five and helps the person. That's what I'm saying. If we're a team, if you're a team and my husband was an entrepreneur or whatever he's doing, he got this, I'm going to go out and do and help him. I'm going to get off my job because guess what? You can't start off your entrepreneur being an entrepreneur without no income because you're not getting no money in the house. Right. So I think uh, somebody because made a comment about that today men, all over social media that I'm like, B. Scott, whoever she is, made a comment that she only want to date an entrepreneur. No, I was 100% for that. And I get I'm what a, I'm right now because you're saying like as a married person, right? But if B. Simone was to meet a man right now and he worked nine to five, he's not going to get it because she's also a comedian. So she's traveling. She's an actress. She's working. She's got her shop. She's at the shop day and night. Like she is constantly doing stuff. So she can't sit still for that. Now, if he also is an entrepreneur, he's going to understand that. That's how she makes her dough. But if she's at a point where she's making enough money for the both of them, then Maybe he could understand it because it's not taken away. But see, mm -mm. what happened? What if you was with your man and he was an entrepreneur making no money and you knew it was going to take him a good three or four years to get everything up to par and off the ground? After you come in from nine to five doing all that and he's still there talking about he working on this and it ain't bringing no dough, you're not going to be as forgiving and as, okay, supportive. You're not. Cause you're gonna be it depends. It depends on what it is. I, I I disagree. I feel like, and a lot of times, people who are entrepreneurs, they have a nine to five themselves, so they they can get their business off the floor. So you are constantly working. So I get it. It's it's what somebody able to tolerate. But I say don't discredit the person who's working that way. Anyway, back to insecure. Okay. That's why I think Nate and Issa would be so great together because they both understand how to make money. How to generate money. We already seen Lawrence just fall apart because he didn't have a job. Now he's going away to San Francisco to get a job. It's lots of jobs in California. It's a day. I mean, in LA, he does not have to go way there because now his job is closing. So he about to be broke again for a minute. So he just got to go where the money is and the conversations are. I get it. And Jay Ellis, why didn't he come to the block party? Oh, I heard the block party was. Why didn't you come? Like, well, that. didn't Condola tell him not to or something? Or were they broke up by then? No, I don't remember them having a conversation about Yeah, that. they said something. It was something that was going to go on. And she was like, no, maybe it's good that they just, he just not be there or something. And see, I that sounds shady. Why? If you work in because she was uncomfortable. She was uncomfortable with the fact that Issa, the man she was dating, and the girl she's working with every day on this project knows her man better than she knows herself. Yeah, I get that. But I'm like, it was a big block. Yeah, he could have been there. I don't know why he didn't come. Oh, oh they God. broke up before the block party. Okay, okay, and okay. About it he should have came. He should have came. He could have been there and nobody even knew he was there. Okay? All the people that was out there, no. Well, he missed out. It doesn't, it's no worries. You yeah. know Lawrence. He was probably but, crying. He was probably like, oh my gosh, I messed up on another girl. Okay, now can we go to um, when Issa and Nate were moving and they walked into on Andrew and Molly. And they invited them like, oh, I guess it was getting more boxes. That's what was going on. They mm -hmm. went to pick up more boxes. And they were like, oh, well, Andrew was like, just in time. We have food. And Molly, and Molly was like, I'm going to stab Molly in the face. Because she was looking like shook. She was so shook. Like, come on now. And Andrew was like, yeah, y'all can come. She's like, oh, yeah, I picked up all this food. 
was such a such a such a place. Were they really gonna eat all of that? She and had a. But it was. It was probably trying to give away the food because it was not the food he had. What he wanted. Mm -hmm. He just decided what he was gonna eat. Like, girl, you really getting beside yourself? Are we real comfortable? I do not think Andrew is just that stuck on you that he ain't ready to tolerate all your um shenanigans and the the blatant disrespect. I don't. So I'm glad they decided to stay because Nate was like, I'm eating, I'm staying because Nate always keep it 100. <laughs> always keep it 100. Um, but see, I could see where Issa was coming from because she, I'm sure she picked up on the vibe like Issa, Molly was looking kind of like an elephant was in the room. So she was like, uh, no, I, I'm not hungry. But then as they kept going, so she was like, okay, good. Yeah, I'm hungry. We're going to eat. And Nate was like, I don't know what you was talking about. Right. I wouldn't eat. Right. Yes. Andrew was about to kick her to the curb. Yes. He is so. The guy he right. has. He is. He has took a point of everything that she's been doing, how she's been acting right. towards her friends, towards him, towards her, his family. Like, he's big about his family. All right. He said, it's my brother. Like, what are you going to do? You, what are you going to, like, you know he what? is so disturbed. After this episode right here, she really going to be. They're going to leave us hanging. They, I know. HBO is going to leave us hanging, and they're going to get into something, and we're not going to know if they're going to be together or not. But if Molly loses Andrew, she's going to be crawling back to Issa. But it's too late, baby. It's too late. And that's that's a whole nother subject about girlfriends and they being all wrapped up in their man. Mm -mm. And then when things go crazy. Right. Go ahead to what happened when um So I th I really enjoyed the scene where they were all sitting down eating. I mean, they looked like they were having a good time. Even Molly, she she was acting so daggone good. She made me feel like, oh, she loved. Issa again, like, yeah, you remember your apartment? You had that big stain on the rug. Oh, it looked like it was growing. They went down memory lane. Okay. Yes. They went back and, you know, they talked about that game that they played. Like, guess how tall is a person or whatever. So. And they wanted to play the game. And then Molly was looking like that stank face. Like, no, let's not. But then. Andrew. Oh, yeah, Andrew again. Andrew is all about the togetherness and let's have a good time. Okay. Andrew likes Issa. Okay. He likes Issa. Hands down. That's just what it is. He's not trying to come between their relationship and get him in the middle of the girl issue because that's what most men do. They would try to, you, you could tell he's staring her the right way, right. but he also seeing Molly's attitude towards the whole situation. It's everything. Just stank. And I know he disagreed on how she acted at the festival. I know she, you know, all these little things that she's been doing. Like she blew up at the festival. She I blew up at in Cancun. He gonna explode. I think he gonna explode and be like, this one, this one, this one. Yes! He's gonna break it down. He's like, you are too much. Like, this is not what I'm about. This is not, I don't do this. So, again, she's going to be by herself. So, Molly thinks she's so slick. And while Issa thought they was having a good old time, Molly texts Andrew ooh, and sent it to Issa by the <laughs> How many times have you done that? I have. Oh, my gosh. True story. This is so, this is crazy. I call myself texting this guy a picture of me in my underwear, like, oh, I got on my polka dots. I sent it to a coworker. No. Not a coworker. What did they say? Oh, he was like, oh, I'm not deleting this picture. I still hear about it to this day. No. Yes. Hey, I don't think you meant to send this to me. Or he was. I said it. I was like, "Oh my gosh!" No, I couldn't. Once he got it, was he like, "Oh, did he text you back?" Like, oh yeah, he texted me back. <laughs> oh, he was like, "I didn't know. I didn't know." He was like, "Oh," and then he, and then when he got the work, 
he told people that was close to me. <laughs> oh my goodness. Why? Why? Yes. He's my friend. We cool. We cool them, but I was so embarrassed. Oh my gosh. I was so embarrassed. I was like, this dude. I said, if you send, if you, I was serious, like, if you tell anybody else about this text message, I am cutting you because I know where you live. He was like, all right, I'm not going to tell nobody. All right, all right. Oh, yeah. yeah. That is so funny. Oh, so, man. trust me, I double check before I send anybody anything. So, I believe when it comes to text messages, they need to create it whereas you can retrieve a message if it's between a certain amount of time. Do that back in the day on the iPhone. You could click it real fast and it would say unsend. But it is. they need to do this for everybody. They could now they have it in Messenger. So I send all my little crazy stuff when I'm going off. I send it in Messenger. Then I take it back because I'm like I ain't really want to say that. Oh, I was just having a moment. Somebody <laughs> and then you end up deleting it back. Like no, I'm not gonna say that. Did you? Say oh, that? I do that. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna say that. She is sent and Issa hit the door. Listen, or literally, I felt. Girl, I felt that in my heart. I felt that in my spirit. Oh, no. Because she was going to cry. And I was like, don't She cry. was so hurt. She was. I, I mean, she was like, hurt. what would you do? Tell so now, what would you do? I would have did the same thing. I would have got up and got my stuff. But I didn't like is that Nate didn't go run after her. Nate should have been like, no, Molly, you've done enough. And Nate I don't know what's going on. She never told Nate that her and Molly were friends? No, he doesn't know. Oh, only Lawrence knows. Yes. Like, okay. she's not going around bad-mouthing her or anything. It's not going around. Okay, that's right. That is so true. That is so true. Okay. Unlike Molly. Yes, I was so hurt. Like, how do you talk about somebody say, see, I'm trying. Yeah. Mm -mm. I would have left, you know, it's nothing for me to say. You already told me how you showed me and you told me to my face how you felt. Yeah. I think Issa did the right thing. And, and he tried to run behind her and be like, not nah, for real. Yeah, like for real, you owe me apology. Like we ain't never talk about it. Are you serious? You just said this. This tells me right now that you sit here talking about me behind my back instead of coming to me. Right. And if she How did, you want to do that? Yeah, she just did that in a text. You know what she's saying verbally. When people show you who they are, believe them. Believe them. And people have showed me one too many times who they are, and I put them in their little special little box. Yeah. I'm telling you. I could count, I could count on one hand. Yeah. And it's just family. And and you. Even if they said it and even if they were mad Maybe you. Or this and that, the bottom line is you said it because you meant it because in your heart that's how you That's felt. how you felt. I'm glad you said it. So now that I know exactly where you're coming from, so now that I know that I can not treat you with a long 10-foot stick, you know, just okay. Yeah. Yeah. People you at a distance, people. I don't know. Right. People have their um, insecurities, their jealousies, or whatever they have against you, and they don't just tell you. But if I apologize to you, and I'm like, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to hurt you, I I'm truly sorry. Because I'm not going to apologize if I'm not really sorry. So if I say, we know. I really apologize. No, I will be like, you, yeah, we know. Period. So if I say I'm sorry, I mean it, and that's it. But if you but see, that's the thing they had they they haven't had a chance to talk about it. Like I feel like it wasn't they've been they was going to have an opportunity to get to talk about the situation. I think that Molly should have just waited until the right time. But in her mind, she's like, "This girl owe me a apology before I go any forward and go forward with this relationship." This friendship, yeah. she owe me apology, but she needs to look at herself. That she was the feel that way. She does, and I don't like that she feels that way because at the table she could have just set the whole record straight. 
when they did sit down and then it was like Issa was like I didn't know if you wanted to talk about it because so right. like that's in the past I'm gonna let it be in the past because we could go around and around and around in circles about what you should have did what I should have did the bottom line it happened we didn't like it are we gonna move on forward or are we gonna let this hinder us and go backwards which one we either going frontwards or are we going backwards if you need to talk about it, I feel like we could talk about it. Right. But I don't feel like it was not it was never to the point that you had to send that type of text or to feel the way that you feel. Because again, these relationships are the same relationships, male or female, that we have. You have to talk, you have to communicate. That she can't read your mind. Address it and say, you know what? What happened at the block party was real wack. And I just really don't even want to talk about it. I don't even want to go back to that space. Right. And say something and acknowledge it because it is always going to be the elephant in the room. And Molly should just speak her mind. See, I don't like people like that who don't speak their mind. And, oh, yeah, girl, blah, blah, blah. And right in the back of your mind, like, trick. She didn't but, it yeah. And but see, I feel like I do not like that. For me personally, I only speak my mind to people that I really, really care about. Um, if I don't care about you and you hurt my feelings, I'm just going to be like, okay, I'm gonna put you in this certain category. I don't express myself to everybody. I know that's a that's something that's that I do. I don't think feel like it's I supposed to express myself to everybody. It's nobody's. It's not everybody's business how I feel about you or, you know what I'm saying? Right. So if I really care about you, then I'm going to take out the time to say how I feel. And it may not be immediately, but it will happen, right. you know? And that's the thing I feel like Molly should have just, like, waited. She seen that Issa was trying. Issa left the, the dad going diner and was like, yeah, it was good. It was so good. She up there telling Lawrence like she had a good time. Like it was they bobbing. Right. But here she is. She's still mad. Okay. She's still holding it in. Yeah, they didn't even hug it out at the end. That's how you know. It wasn't no real genuine hug it out. It wasn't no girl, I miss you and I need you back in my life. And let's just promise to never ever get mad and not talk you know like let's promise that we're not gonna do that no more they didn't just say that no they didn't molly was but like, when they walked out um isa asked her to, you know do you want to meet up because nate's moving or whatever so i think she was just like she was going to get there <laughs> i don't feel like it had to immediately happen i feel like it was, was hmm? they move that when she told her she was helping nate move she was like oh okay Yep, she was very like, "Oh, this is what it, this is all you gotta say." Yeah, oh, you want to talk about Nate? You want to talk about Lawrence? You want to? You don't want to talk about us? Do you not know we got a problem? Yeah. If you felt like that was the time, why didn't you bring it up? Like, hey, Issa, you know what? I just want to get this off my chest. Like, I didn't like when you did X, Y, Z. Now the problem is Molly would not be a. She's the type of chick that's not able to accept. The apology right. and move forward. I apologize. She is not going to accept it anyway. She's <laughs> one of the people that just ride on something. She's one of the people who do not need kids because that child will do something wrong and disappoint her over and over and over again. And she will be like harping on something that he did in kindergarten right. and he's now in sixth grade. Like, and that's why she ain't going to have no man either. Okay? She's going to be alone. So she needs to get over there ch chatting with her own mama and get the speech that uh, Issa got from her mama because that's the only person that's going to be her friend at the end of the day is her mama. First of all, Issa mother set her up for greatness with that talk. Issa cried on her mother. Ever since that conversation, I felt like Issa grew. Like mm -hmm. I saw her blossom. She just took on whatever she had to take on head on. And, yeah, you need those tough conversations with your mama. But she's so mad with her daddy, Molly, right. that she's not even communicating properly with her mother. Like, she just, people like that who harbor 
feelings. She's going to have a heart attack because she's so angry all the time. All the time. And nothing is ever good enough for her. Nothing. She's going to complain. That room was so perfect when they went away on the trip. Everything was perfect. And I just don't feel like, I didn't even feel like she could appreciate that because this, all I remember is it was about the sex with Andrew. That's all. And then her showing her behind at the water. Like, I don't have good memories of Molly. I don't like having bad memories of her, but she's creating a whole lot of bad memories. Yeah, I agree. And at first, I didn't think that Andrew was going to be around as long as he is with her. But I must say, I do see her trying to do things outside of the bedroom with her. But she always take it back to just... And maybe that's all she got to offer. How about that? What else does she got to offer? Unless well... And he don't need her money. He not does he know? Does he know that she's going to a therapist? No, she did not tell him that. She needs to so he can understand. He might leave then because he thinks she's really crazy. So she might want to keep it to herself. Because a lot of people don't understand therapy when I think therapy is great. But I just think Molly needs to get to know herself before she even extends herself to be a friend to anybody. Because she's not even being a friend to herself right now. No, she's not. She is horrible. Like we don't you, you know, you you don't like you. We like Yvonne Orgy. We love her comedy on HBO, but we don't like you, Molly. You don't. So Molly personality. And you know what? I bet you that's gonna be a hard thing for people to separate because they act so well. People are gonna think Yvonne is Molly, like that's her personality. No, that is not her personality. She just acts very well. No, Black Twitter, she said it's eating her apart because of what happened. She said they are going off on her. I need to check Twitter. Like, I usually check Twitter, but I had stopped after um, the Condoleezza. Condoleezza. <laughs> Condoleezza. <laughs> I know it's Condola. After Condoleezza writes. <laughs> Condoleezza. Yeah. I call her Condoleezza. More. And it's apparent that Kyla Pratt will not be coming back in the scene. I did like how Molly said that she would follow her when she go to DC and be her down. Like that would make Issa feel like she had her back. 